Hello everyone and welcome back to the Brain Boost channel. So today we're going to be looking at evolutionary biology and some of its limitations. Mainly the big question of why evolutionary design isn't optimal and why is it imperfect? So let's just jump into the topics for today. So today we're going to be looking at different um, aspects or lenses to address this question. Uh, we're going to look at the Red Queen hypothesis. We're going to look at local adaptive peaks or fitness landscapes. We're going to get into some structural limitations and how descent um, plays a role in evolution and how it constrains individuals or organisms. So again, we're getting to the main question of why is evolutionary design imperfect? And the first thing to address this is um, the Red Queen hypothesis. We can look at it through this lens. Um, essentially what the Red Queen hypothesis states is that um, organisms are constantly evolving and so are their opposing species and the environment that they're in. So uh, a particular species has to keep up with the rate of improvement in their surroundings, whether it's the environment or um, any opposing species, and they have to keep up with the pace. So this is a quote from Alice in Wonderland, if you recognize it, it says, it takes all the running you can do to stay in the same place. And this was said by the Red Queen. Um, so that's essentially what this is stating. So we can actually look at this graph to explore this uh, statement further. So if we look at this graph here, um, we have a light blue line that's representing the parasite in the environment and a dark blue line that represents the host here, right? So the x-axis here represents the generation and the y-axis here represents the frequency. And um, so if we start at the first few generations here, we see that the host starts at some level of fitness and it evolves to a better fitness as we can see by its frequency increasing here but we also do see that as the number of uh, host increases or as its frequency increases so does the frequency for the parasite it also ends up increasing here so eventually what happens is um, we see the host is starting to increase but the parasite also increases and it gets better and better in terms of fitness and the host can't necessarily keep up and it's kind of getting outcompeted you could say and so then the parasite is up here and we can see that uh, the host frequency begins to dip down um, and so when it starts to dip down too far the parasite also the frequency of the parasite also begins to dip too um, because there's not necessarily enough quote-unquote host to work with here there's too few so to speak so we can see that the parasite also begins to dip down so it goes down and the host can now catch up so to speak and so its frequency increases and then so does the parasite so it's just kind of like a back and forth here um, because they're constantly evolving trying to keep up with their surroundings and their opposing species so each other so we can see just uh, a lot of up and downs between them here. So another lens that we can look at this question through is called um, local adaptive peaks or fitness landscapes. So we can break down different traits of an organism and we can plot them to get a fitness landscape as we can see here. So for a certain set of traits, let's say trait A can be here and trait B or trait 1 and trait 2, we can use that um, on the plane here. Um, they, uh, for a certain set of these traits, fitness will be maximized. And for those two sets of traits, for example, let's say if we're going up into like a 3D plane here, we go upwards. That is the level of fitness increasing. So here we can see that we're going upwards and there is a max There is a max here. We can see that fitness can be maximized and we see a peak for two certain traits, for example. 
But we know um, an organism isn't just made up of like a few traits. You get um, different peaks actually is what we see in the right side here. And this is because um, we're seeing peak fitness for a set of traits. So maybe um, at one peak here, a, a trait number three would be maximized or here a different trait is being maximized or here it's it's a different you know maximizing for a trait uh, so it's it's a more complex than just trait number one trait number two fitness increase we see a peak oh look at that we have peak fitness it's more than that which is why we have a rugged landscape here as we can see there are multiple peaks and valleys so organisms are evolving to reach a certain peak here, um, but we can see that there are so many. So once again, this is our rugged landscape, which is a lot more realistic. This is just to kind of simplify and get the idea across. So another reason for why evolutionary design is imperfect is that there are structural limitations and biological constraints that can prevent certain things um, in organisms. So let's talk about what these structural limitations can be. So a really big question that came up, that comes up in when talking about evolutionary biology is that, well, why don't animals have wheels? You know, wheels are really, really beneficial as we can see in cars and bikes and they get from point A to point B very quickly and very efficiently. So why isn't this the case for animals, you know, to help with speed and such? But there are layers to the answer here. So let's start with the development of the wheel. So when a wheel is, the way a wheel works is that it needs to be rotating freely and it can't be attached to the axles that would support the rest of the body so in terms of the actual physicality here it doesn't really work for a wheel to develop uh, biologically speaking it's really not feasible in terms of that and also wheels are quite difficult to navigate actually we know that you know a car we use cars on roads for the most part flat surfaces um, wheels are really good for flat surfaces, but animals aren't necessarily only facing flat surfaces. They're facing multiple different types of terrains, so they might be better off in a different build that will help them through those different terrains. Could be rocky or mountainous, and wheels might not provide the best form of transportation in these different types of terrains. So overall, it's not necessarily beneficial you know, the evolution of body parts and systems occurs in stages. So a wheel development in an animal isn't necessarily beneficial based on all these reasons we've discussed. So the evolution of it doesn't even happen. It won't even begin because of kind of all the things against its possibility of even evolving a wheel or beginning to evolve into early stages of a wheel. And lastly, we're going to talk about um, the constraints of descent and um, ancestry and why that also explains the imperfectness of evolutionary design. So animals are constrained to the animal or animals that they've evolved from. And an example here is the whale. This is the image here of a whale, um, of a whale skeleton. And it uses fins, we know that. Um, but we know that it also has a pelvic girdle here, circled in red. And this has been evolved from animals on land with legs. So, you know, you can only really modify so much in terms of your physicality here in evolution. You can't just reinvent a whole new physical body structure. It's coming from somewhere, right? So there are constraints based on the 
descent of the organism. So this is actually something that we see in many other organisms. These are actual vestigial features and we see these in humans. There are multiple examples of this um, and we can actually discuss that in a separate video uh, and that would be very interesting for for people that are studying you know your uh, your basic evolutionary biology class. So stay tuned for that type of video. So that's the end of today's video of why evolutionary design is not necessarily the most optimal or why it's imperfect. Um, make sure to like this video or comment any, any comment or any idea for future topics that you would like to see that you may be learning and struggling with in class. And subscribe to this channel for future videos and updates uh, on our channel.